back to All Things Jira and I'm back with another story. Now this story, um, this story is actually the story that led me to looking into change links. So it's a, it's a little interesting. Before I get into the story, make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel and please share it with your friends. Now today's story is about Pauline Picard. Now this takes place in Brittany, France in 1922. Now the Picards lived on a huge farm in Brittany, France. They had nine children and the youngest child was two-year-old Pauline Picard. Now the area in Brittany that they lived in, it was considered relatively safe. It was a, a small area, everyone knew each other, and there wasn't much crime in the area. On April 6, 1922, Pauline was out on the farm playing with her siblings while their mom was in the house cooking dinner. After a while, the mom called out for the children to come in. The children came in, but they didn't have Pauline with them. So the mom, you know, yelled out the window for Pauline. She didn't respond. So she went outside to look for her. She couldn't, she didn't see her outside either. Now it was said that Pauline had followed after the older girls to go take care of some of the horses. So it, it could have been that maybe the older girls didn't see Pauline follow after them. Because the story is so old, I couldn't find a lot of information about where the children said Pauline was or where the children said the last place they saw Pauline was. So as far as we know, she possibly followed the older girls out to take care of the horses, but it's not said whether they saw her out there or not. But needless to say, the mom went out, she could not find Pauline. So they immediately, the whole family started to search the entire farm. She called the authorities, they came out and helped them search the farm as well. Unfortunately, there was a storm rolling in at the same time that evening. So they had to cut the search short early. It was a really, it was gonna be a really bad storm. There was no way that they could continue searching for Pauline at that time. So they had to end the search and pick it up the next day. So the next day, which was April 7th, 150 people came out to help the Picard search for Pauline. They searched the farm again. They searched the entire village. And the storm had been so bad, there was a lot of damage from the storm. So a lot of the searchers were very worried that maybe Pauline, if she hadn't already been hurt, was hurt by being out in that storm all night. Unfortunately, they searched all day, but they could not find Pauline. There were reports in the paper about her over the next few days and weeks. And they started to call her La Petite Pauline. Now at this point, they weren't sure if Pauline had wandered off, if she you know, had maybe just gotten hurt on the farm and they couldn't find her, or if someone had abducted her. There were a few suspects um, if it was an abduction. And the first one was Mansour Caramon. He was a 50 year old man that had previously been in prison for a violent crime. And I could not find out what exactly the violent crime was. He had been released from prison just a few months before Pauline went missing was a farmhand. He did odd jobs on the different farms in the area and he was at the Picard farm helping them out um, just a day or so before Pauline went missing. Now witnesses had said that he took a liking to Pauline, that he really liked her. He was always around her, playing with her, giving her candies and things like that. But the day that everyone went out to search for Pauline, he was nowhere to be found. So this was a little suspicious. So they, um, went on a hunt for this man to find him and see if he knew anything about uh, missing Pauline. So they eventually caught up with him and he was working on a neighboring farm about, I think, five miles away from the Picards. And apparently the farm owners did give him an alibi. They, they said that he was actually there on their farm the whole time. There was another suspect. He was a traveling umbrella salesman. I couldn't find any information about him, why they suspected him, but he couldn't be found as well. The searchers that were out there looking for her were starting to worry, like I said, that she had been hurt in the storm. They also thought that maybe she had been eaten by wild boars in the area. They also blamed traveling gypsies, although no gypsies have been seen in the area in months, I believe. So at this point, days have passed, weeks have passed, and little Pauline still had not been found until one day the family got a call from the police stating that there was a little girl found in Cherbourg, France. Now Cherbourg is about 200 miles away from Brittany, France. And they believe this little girl could be Pauline. They said the little girl was found just wandering the streets of Cherbourg and that someone had taken her to a nearby convent for them to take care of her until they could figure out where she belonged. Now I saw a couple sources 
Well, one source said that the police had actually brought the Picards a picture of the little girl and that when the mom saw the picture, you know, she was excited saying that this was Pauline and she uh, wanted to go get her daughter. But I only saw this on one source. I didn't see this anywhere else. So along with several police officers from Brittany, the Picards went to Charbor to see this little girl to, you know, see if it was Pauline and hopefully bring Pauline home. When they got there, they saw the little girl and they were a little skeptical on whether it was actually Pauline or not because she looked really different. And at this point, I believe six or seven weeks had passed since Pauline had went missing. This little girl was quite smaller than Pauline. Um, she was skinnier than Pauline and she was wearing different clothes. Now it was said that these clothes were much nicer than the clothes that Pauline had on when she went missing, especially her shoes. So the family wasn't sure how she would have gotten these clothes. Now, the fact that the little girl was skinnier than Pauline, the authorities there had assured them that this wasn't an issue, that it was understandable that she was skinnier because she was a two-year-old child wandering the streets by herself. So she more than likely didn't have adequate nu nutrition during that time. And that could have been why, that was most likely why she was skinnier, but they couldn't quite explain her having different clothes. The clothes that she was wearing, they were also more expensive than any clothes that the Picards could possibly buy for Pauline. And typically Pauline was a really energetic and talkative child, but this little girl wasn't saying anything to the Picards. She looked as if she didn't even recognize them. Now, when they brought this up to the authorities in Charbourg, the authorities said that the little girl hadn't said a word at all since she was found. So they were saying that it was possibly the trauma from her being lost for such a long time. And they told the Picards not to worry about it, that this was normal. Now, some of the sources really kind of played up how skeptical that the Picards were about whether this was Pauline or not and others weren't. So I'm really not sure exactly how skeptical they were. I'm not sure if they really even wanted to take this little girl home or, you know, the last source that I saw eventually said that the father started to really believe that this was Pauline. So he said, yes, I'm taking my daughter home while the mom was still a little more skeptical. And then other sources said that they both eventually decided that this was Pauline and they were happy to take their daughter home. So I'm really not sure which one it was at this point. So despite whatever reservations they had about this little girl, they took her home. They said, this is our daughter, Parlene, and they took her home. Now on the way home to Brittany, they took the train. Um, they realized that the little girl didn't speak or understand any Breton. Breton is their native language in Brittany, France. So this was another issue for them. And when she got home, she also did not recognize her siblings and she didn't really want to play with any of them either. Eventually, her family doctor came over to give her an examination. He identified her positively as Pauline. He said, this is definitely Pauline. He stated that her not speaking, it was basically amnesia from the trauma that she had faced being gone for six weeks. He told them that she was possibly purposely not speaking because she was still a little traumatized from the whole incident. He also noted that she was relatively healthy, although she was skinnier, and she seemed that she hadn't been mistreated for the time that she was gone. Eventually, she started to speak. She started to recognize some of the help that they had on the farm. She recognized, I believe, their pet cat. She started to say yes, no, and father. So she really warmed up to the father. She also started to play with her siblings and it seemed like she was getting her normal, energetic, and talkative personality back. So the family was really reassured at this point that they had their daughter back. A neighbor and a local farmer, um, his name was Eves Martin, he came by to see the little girl. I believe people in the village had heard of the initial skepticism of whether this was Pauline or not. So Eve. So Eves Martin came over to see the family and he came over and asked like, are you, are you positive that you have Pauline back? Are you sure this is her? And the mom told him, yes, you know, at this point we're quite sure it's her. We're very happy to have her home. She even called Pauline in the room to you know, speak to Mr. Martin. As soon as she walked in the room, Mr. Martin's face went extremely pale and he started to laugh. It was very strange. And he started to yell, God is just, I am the culprit and he ran off. It was really strange to them, um, but they said that he was like a rather eccentric type personality in the village. So they didn't, you know, bother following after him or trying to figure out what was going on or what he was talking about. But it was said that he was checked into an asylum a few days after that and no one ever saw him again. 
On May 26, 1922, a local farmer came across a body of a small child. Um, now this child was partially clothed. Um, the child was missing their hands, their head, and their feet, and the body was really badly mutilated. Now this child was found about 800 meters away from the Picard farm. So the farmer called the authorities and the authorities came. Um, now they noted that this child was found, you know, not far from the Picard farm. The child had been there for a, a while. The body was already decomposing, but they didn't say in the article how long they believed that this child had been dead. This was also a location that had been searched by um, the search party several times. So they know that this child wasn't there when uh, little Pauline initially went missing. The body was missing its hands, its feet, and its head. Um, there were several deep lacerations, one side of the body underneath the ribs. And they didn't say what made these lacerations. I'm not sure if they knew whether it was from an animal or a knife or what it was. Now there was a skull found near the body. Some of the sources I read also said that there were fingernails and teeth found uh, near the body as well. The body was partially clothed, but there were clothes around that area as well. Some were kind of thrown around and then others were folded into a pile. Now this was a black and white checkered dress, a blue coat, and some tights. Now these were the exact clothes that Pauline was wearing when she went missing. Everyone in the village was shocked. If this body that was found is the body of Pauline, then who do the Picards have in their home? Now, Pauline's father did not want to believe that this, the body of this child was Pauline. He didn't want to believe it at all, but um, the family did positively identify the clothes as the clothes belonging to Pauline. Of course, um, at this time, there was no DNA testing like we have now, so they couldn't tell that way. They had the family doctor come and he, examined the body and he identified the body as Pauline, but the skull did not belong to Pauline. In fact, the skull didn't belong to a girl at all. It belonged to a full grown man. A cause of death was determined um, on the body and it was stated that the child had starved to death and then was ravaged by animals after death. Pauline's body was buried in the local cemetery and the little girl that they thought was Pauline, she attended the funeral as well. The child that was living with the Picards was sent back to Cherbourg so they could try to figure out who she really was. Um, and the Picard family was devastated. Not only did they lose Pauline, and then they lost this little girl that they had been attached to for the past few months. So the little girl was sent back to Cherbourg. They said that the little girl was really upset. She was very sad and depressed. She really... Um, missed the Picards. They said, they said that she would cry for her mother, her father, and her siblings night after night until she was finally adopted. They never actually figured out exactly who she was. They never figured out where she came from or why she was wandering the streets, but she was eventually adopted by two sisters. But she later died about two years after being adopted by the sisters. And unfortunately, the family never figured out exactly what happened to Pauline. I know they had a cause of death, you know, what the authorities thought happened, but they never figured out exactly what happened to Pauline. Now, apparently the farm has stayed in the family. Um, the people that live on the farm to today are ancestors of the Picards from then. So, you know, it's possible that they could dig up the body and do um, DNA tests or something of that nature to try to figure out, um, you know, was that truly the body of Pauline? Because she had been positively identified twice in two different situations. So we don't really know if that was her or not. So what do you think? What do you think about this story? Um, do you think that the, the body that they finally found was actually Pauline? Who do you think killed her? Personally, I think it was Eve's Martin, the one that was uh, sent to the asylum after he went to visit the family, because that was too strange. I know they said that he was um, an eccentric type of person, but that was rather odd. To me, it seemed as if he knew what he did. He knew that he took Pauline and he killed her. And then to see this, you know, Pauline double living in the Picard home, maybe that completely snapped him. I mean, you would have to be crazy anyway to, um, to abduct a child and kill a child. But I think that completely sent him over the edge, which is why he went to the asylum. I'm not sure about the umbrella salesman. And then the other guy, uh, Mansoor Caramore, he had an alibi. So I doubt it could be him. Although four miles isn't a, you know, a long way from the farm, but 
personally i think it was um eve's martin i don't I, I wonder who the little girl was where she came from where her family was uh, the little girl that they found in charborg and replaces pauline but um this story led me to the story about changelings because one of the theories in this story was that the little girl was a changeling that you know fairies had taken pauline and replaced pauline with this little girl and uh, if you remember the changeling video one of the ways to tell if your child was a changeling was if they were all always sick um this little girl was even though she was healthy she was rather skinny uh they never said that she uh picked up weight again after she lived with the picards um and she died two years later from an illness so it very well could have been a changeling if that's something that you believe anyway what do you think who do you think did it well, that was my story for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and meet me here every Wednesday at 10.15 for another story. Thank you guys. Bye.